so I went to the doctor's list last night and um, I have got to have some um, wound cleaning by the nurses, debridement. Um, he said to me that it's not healing quick enough. Well, I know that. Well, I know that. Um, it's That'll be down to the steroids or down to being pre-diabetic. That slows healing down. Um, so I've booked... I've got my first appointment there on Monday, so I'm going to continue to dress my elbow and um, clean, you know, wash it and, and dry it and put a new dressing on it. But they'll do a bit more, which won't be very nice. So there's that. So it's, it feels like we're trying to fit me in. We've been having all these appointments for Mark and trying to slot me in around those, although his, <clears throat> his um, physio is starting to peter out a bit more now. Um, we got there this morning and we sat there and sat there and um, I looked at my um, calendar on my phone and it said 11 o'clock and I went to Mark, it's, it says 11 o'clock on the phone and it, we'd gone for a 10.30 appointment. He said, well, I've got it as 10.30 and I said, well, I've got it for 11 o'clock. So I went off, I left him there and I went off back up to the x-ray um, place to replace my appointment that I didn't get yesterday. And I had it done straight away, well, within five minutes of being there. So I had that, so I can put my earrings back in if I can find them. Um, and then I went and collected the shopping and then I came back for him. And apparently his appointment had been 10.30, but she was just running late. Um, but he did really well. He actually went, he um, did a full, full um, revolution on, on the bike which he's been struggling, well, not struggling to do, he's gradually been getting better and it's been so close, it's backwards, it's the re revolution backwards. Um, and a couple of times we've sort of said, you know, you're nearly there, you're nearly there. Well, he did it today apparently and I wasn't there to witness it. So um, he continues to do really well. And um, we bought the shopping back, he bought the shopping in and put it away. He's done the chickens tonight. Um, yeah, it's it's really lovely having him do stuff and me not needing to, not not throwing myself around and falling over when I'm trying to help. Um, so, yeah, so I've got an appointment on Monday and then um, medical wise, I think that's it, really. Well, I'll have another one probably Wednesday or Thursday and then he's got his only one physio next Friday. So we've been looking forward to a weekend off. It it feels like every morning we have to get up. And I said to him, because we were out this evening, well, early, late afternoon, picking up meat. So we were back to the village that we went to, to the doctors to pick up our meat from the farm. And I said to him, I've, it feels like we're commuting again. You know, this regular having to be up by a certain time. And um, it's... Uh, a bit trying and I wanted to go to Cultura tomorrow and we'd sort of half decided that we'd go to Cultura tomorrow and then I remembered that we're going to a vide um, atelier, atelier at Cleo's at three o'clock and meeting Lizzie there so we won't be able to go to Cultura tomorrow. Um, maybe we'll go Monday, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't like those things that Joe made, uh, I shared the pinwheel things uh, mark liked them but he he hasn't got the same taste i have um they weren't nice so they made such a mess i had quite a lot of clearing up to do um and i didn't enjoy them i i don't think i'll make them again i've still got the french onion soup to make <clears throat> but again we keep coming and going we haven't got time i just haven't had time so i've still got that to do um I had a quick message with Cameron's mum, you know, Cameron from um, what's Dan's channel called? Dan's channel. Escape to rural France. Um, I had a quick message with, with his mum, Cameron's mum, um, and um, asked her if she had any any idea about is there an investigation going on um, about the, the death at the at the chateau and she said um, she had no idea it all seems a bit like that so she doesn't know anything and um, I would have thought if there was something going on that she would but she doesn't so that's intriguing
I do wonder what went on there. It's very sad, isn't it? I feel very sad for the people that are approaching Christmas without their loved one. Well, lots of people, I know lots of people are approaching Christmas without their loved ones, but yeah, I feel very sorry for them. What else? What day is it? I don't know. We've just watched, um, we've just watched, I thought that had turned itself off then. We've just watched something called The Father with um, Anthony Hopkins and Olivia Coleman in it. Oh God, that was really depressing, um, confusing, difficult, uh, very clever, very powerful um, about um, a father who's dementing. I won't say any more than that. It's very cleverly done, um, enough to make us question our own sanity. <laughs> it's like, who's that? When's that? What's that? What's going on? So, yeah, we just finished watching that. And it's, it feels, it always feels late. And it's only, it's only just before eight o'clock. And it feels so much later. I'm, you know, already now wanting to go to bed. It happens every night. I just feel ready for bed at half past seven. Um, I don't go to bed at half, half, half past seven. Because even if I go to bed at half past ten, I'm still up at half six and if I went at half seven I'd be up at four o'clock in the morning and that would be it so I have to hang it out a bit um so thank you Mr Braindead for letting me know the names of the chateaus I've never really been into chateaus I don't go touring chateaus I know a lot of people do it's never been my thing so I don't really take in or worry about what the names of them are or, or whatever or what their history is so um but I, I just was thinking yesterday as we were coming along that must be you know that the second chateau must be the chateau that we walked down to when we lived in San Pierre de Maille um and it's probably at least a couple of kilometers or more down the road but you can't see it all there is is a gate into the obviously into the gardens because I've just um Yes, this afternoon I went and looked on Google Street Street View and stood outside the gate and and it's quite a nondescript gate, um and and I kept I moved up, moved back, moved down, you can't see the chateau and that's so normal. It's like our local chateau, um, Bois Morand, you can't see that. You probably would see it now if I were able to walk down across the other side of the road and down into the fields. And then, and you know, so it's like probably walk down two kilometers and then look across. I'd get a really good view of the chateau. I know that through winter, and but I can't go down there anymore. Um, and that's another thing we've as we've been driving and driving around. I, I keep looking at places and thinking, God, I used to walk up there. I used to walk. That used to be part of my walk around the block, and I'm. I'm missing that. I miss it. I, you know, there were days when I would get up and and off I'd go. I'd have to. It was like, right, okay, I'm going to go for a walk. And I'd be walking really quite fast. How long ago is that? We were walking during COVID. You know, the beginning of COVID when we were locked down and we were only allowed to go so far. But before that, before COVID, so yeah, probably some time ago now, time's rushing past. But yeah, I'm I'm really missing being able to walk just around the block. Yeah, it's not far, but it was for me. And and I'm missing that. And I'm sort of noticing one of the pathways I used to walk on and it reminds me. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna try and stay awake. What am I gonna do? Have a look at YouTube, see what's going on there. What did I watch on Netflix? So I watched so I watched Beckham. Did I talk about that? I may not have done. I watched Beckham. I might not have done. I watched Beckham on Netflix and um, I'm not a football fan and I never followed him or his lifestyle or his life and I didn't follow him and Posh or all of that. I'm not a celebrity watcher but so I was obviously very bored so I thought oh, I'll watch this and I watched it. It's absolutely fascinating, absolutely fascinating and he was an amazing footballer absolutely amazing you know if you could say he was a genius and which i know that you wouldn't talk about a sports person as a genius he was a genius 
I'm oh, sure I'm repeating myself. Okay, I'm going to repeat myself, and and uh, if I get it, if I repeat myself, I'm sorry. I was struck by how his father um, taught him to 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 you know to play football, and he trained him to play football as a a, a coach would train an athlete or a gymnast, and getting him to repeat, repeat, repeat. The same movement, the same movement, keep repeating it, keep doing it until it all your neural, neural pathways make connections. You know, you build new pathways when you repeat something, you build new pathways when you repeat it in your head. Um, so he made him repeat, repeat, repeat. And the interesting thing was that his dad didn't give him lots of praise, didn't give him, he encouraged him supported him obviously loved him but wasn't overly praising him when he was getting stuff right and what intrigued me was that when he he there was then signed by alex ferguson and alex was exactly the same in how he parented him you know he didn't he didn't get high praise from alex although he was highly regarded and highly respected he didn't get that high praise from Alex it was like another he you know found another father figure who treated him exactly the same I found that as a, as a psychotherapist I found that fascinating what I was struck by was how vilified he became um, Beckham when he got something wrong and I can't even remember what it was that he got wrong now absolutely vilified just like they do with um, Harry and Meghan him and Bex uh, Posh and Bex get vilified by the English tabloid press and 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 all the other people that that hang on to that and that was really sad and I was so impressed that when he was being treated so badly when he was on the field when he was playing and he never ever once responded or reacted that is incredibly strong to not react to not react to to what was going on in the stands in the crowd amazing so I have a different feeling about him and um, Victoria Beckham. Um, yeah, I just think they're a, a kind, happy couple just trying to get on with their lives. And it just so happens that they're famous. And I know that there'll be people that disagree with me. It's a little bit like the whole um, Harry and Meghan stuff. There'll be people that disagree, they people that are disagree with me about Harry and Meghan. I just think, you know, it's a different side to the story. And then I watched Robbie Williams, who I really liked back when I was far too old to like him, but I liked him when he was part of Take That. And, um, and I watched that and that was very sad as well to watch. Very sad. And it's really lovely to see him in a, a loving relationship with four kids. Um, but I feel very sad that he in some ways is somewhat broken and he doesn't look to me like someone that's going to live in, into old age um that's sad very sad so if i've repeated myself sorry i don't think i have i, I probably had this conversation with someone else probably mark when we're traveling which is frequently at the moment anyway have a good evening it's eight o'clock it might be this uploads quickly as i said the other night if it uploads quickly you'll get it this evening if it doesn't you'll get it in the morning um and bon weekend <laughs>